Hello my friends and welcome to another video. Today's video is my October wrap up and yes it is sort of late once again. I feel like I've been getting these videos out later and later recently because time gets away from me but <laughs> this is probably going to be my shortest wrap up to date. Uh, I read four books in the month of October and yes you are hearing that right four for usually I read between 10 to 12 books a month and as much as I wanted October to be the best reading month ever I wanted to read all the Halloween spooky creepy scary best books I didn't want to read like at all I didn't feel like it I wasn't really into it when I was into reading, <laughs> the books were just not grabbing my attention at all. Uh, so I just struggled with reading in the month of October, which was pretty disappointing for me. I really, really wanted to read just some fun, spooky books, but of course, you know, things happen. Life happens. Your brain doesn't let you read sometimes, and that's what happened with me. However, I will say the only plus side to me reading only four books this month is they were all winners. I was really happy with everything I ended up reading. So out of the four books, I have one four star and three five star books. So I mean, is that really, is it a bad thing? I don't think so. Because at least everything I read, I really enjoyed. But anyways, I have also decided that I am not going to do a November TBR this month because I have just been grabbing books off my shelf. Like if it you know, pulls at me, I'm reading it, and I have already read four books in the month of November, so I'm already, you know, surpassing October's <laughs> um, amount. So I am not going to have a November TBR, I'm just going to kind of play it by ear and let the wind take me, you know, let the mood pick it. And uh, so far it's been better. I think TBRs really, really mess me up. <laughs> so anyways, let's get into the books I read. I will give you a little synopsis, tell you my thoughts, tell you how I'm feeling about them. Um, you can pretty much tell already that they're all good. So we're going to have a positive wrap up this month and I'm, I'm kind of happy about that. It's, it's good. So like I said, I have one four star and that is Hunted by Darcy Coates. I am trying to read at least two Darcy Coates a month because I want to read every single book by her, um, but this one is the only one I got to in the month of October, and I went in with hesitation. A lot of people don't like this one, and I think I know why from reading it now. I, I kind of, I think I can understand why people don't like it. However, the reason that I think people don't like it is exactly the reason I like it, <laughs> which I think is very funny. And this is very, very different than Darcy's usual haunted house kind of stories. This is very different. This book is about a woman named Eileen who goes missing while hiking through this forest. And her camera is found and there are some weird pictures on this camera. And her brother, Chris, believes that she's still alive. He's not going to believe that she's dead or, you know, whatever. He doesn't want to believe it. So him and his friends go to this forest and decide to try to find her. They want to look for her. They want to find her. They want to prove that she's not dead. I gave this four stars. I really, really, really enjoyed this one. Um, like I said, it's very different than her usual haunted house story. It takes place in the forest. It has, you know, you know, it has a different vibe. And I don't want to go into too much detail because in case you haven't read it, I don't want to spoil too much, but it, it's different. And I think a lot of people were disappointed by that. I think a lot of people wanted the supernatural kind of thing to be more prominent and more involved and I think they were disappointed by the outcome. However, this is very much what I enjoy. This was enjoyable for me in the sense of 
it was different and it was something that I typically gravitate towards. It's big. This is probably one of her bigger books and I think it's kind of a hindrance in this story. It does drag just a tiny tiny bit and the story does become a bit repetitive because there's only so much happening when the characters are in the forest. There's, you know, the same thing. They're looking for Eileen. They're searching for Eileen. They're looking for Eileen. They're searching for Eileen. I mean, there's not too much differentiating most chapters in some parts. And so for me, that took it down because this could have been a five-star read if it was shorter, just like a little bit shorter, maybe a, like a hundred pages less. And just, it would have helped with the repetition, I think. And it just would have, it would have sped things up a bit faster, which I think this needed. But overall, I really did like this. And a lot of people seem to not like this book. <laughs> Probably one for the length, it is, um, it's a lot. And two, it's the lack of supernatural, I think. People just really wanted that to be more and it wasn't as much. So, I don't know. I really, really enjoyed it. I really liked it. I don't think it's one of my absolute favorites, but I did really, really like it and I am glad I read it and I, I mean, I would probably reread it at some point in my life, so. Next up, five star category. We have three books and that's the end. <laughs> that's it. Uh, first up was the first book I read in October and that is Cackle by Rachel Harrison and oh my gosh I am obsessed with this book. I am obsessed with this book. I am obsessed. When I first saw it when I first saw the cover, when I first saw what it was going to entail, I was very excited about it. I read Rachel Harrison's other book, The Return. I really enjoyed that as well. And so I was just looking forward to this and it was just, it was so, so good. This book is about Annie who, after a pretty rough breakup, decides to kind of pick up and have a fresh start. She moves to this small town and the town is picturesque. It is perfect. It is, it's what you want when you think of a small town. She just, she's really happy there and she meets this woman named Sophie and Sophie is very kind and she really kind of just takes Annie in and wants to be friends and is kind of helping Annie with how she deals with life and how she goes about life and you know after her breakup Annie's upset she's devastated and so Sophie's there just to kind of help her and kind of be a guide but the people in the town don't really like Sophie <laughs> they think she's odd they're kind of scared of her and so Annie's like what is going on this is a little suspicious <laughs> but it is just it's considered a cozy horror I don't know how much horror I would say this is. It is a witchy story. I personally, if I had to compare it to anything, I would mash it up with Gilmore Girls and Practical Magic. It is, like if you combine those two together, this is what this book reminds me of. I don't necessarily, I don't know, cozy horror I guess is kind of a broad term. So I guess you could consider this a cozy horror, but it's not, in my opinion, like Darcy's cozy horror. Because you know I consider Darcy cozy, but I would consider Darcy's books way more on the verge of horror. This is a little more lighthearted, like very lighthearted, but it's just so sweet. I love Annie. I love Annie so much. She's a She's a great main character. I could see myself in Annie. She would say things and I'd be like, you know, me too, Annie. <laughs> me too. <laughs> I related to her a lot. So I really, really liked her. I loved Sophie. Just really good characters that I really connected with. It's just such an amazing witchy read. It is just so, it warmed my heart. It was like a cozy hug in a 
it, you just wrap you in a blanket. It just felt so nice and like I'm pretty sure I cried just because I was happy. Like I wasn't even sad. I was just like, this is so nice. Like I just feel so happy. And I'm telling you right now because, oh, I forgot to mention, I got this on NetGalley. <laughs> I totally spaced that I said that I didn't even say that I got this off of NetGalley. I was approved for this on NetGalley. So I got an arc of it and I have to have a physical copy. I have to, I need one because I want to reread this book every time I'm sad so it can feel like a hug and just like a friend, you know, like comforting. I just, I need it. Oh my gosh, it's so, 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 so good. I loved it. That's why I gave it five stars. I could not give it anything less than five stars. But again, be wary with the label horror. I think there are some moments where it could be like a little creepy, but personally not for me, so... This isn't like gonna scare you. This isn't gonna creep you out. This isn't gonna spook you. It's more just like that that light spooky vibe. It's just more of like a October Halloweeny read without being scary. And it's more cozy, if that makes any sense. Hopefully it does. But I loved it. It was it was amazing. Ah, oh, I loved it so much. And the cover is absolutely gorgeous. Okay, next up in the five star category is Slewfoot by Brom. Now, if you watched my reading vlog, I did a reading vlog where I read this. <laughs> That's obviously what I did in a reading vlog. But I read this book over a weekend. I read it on a Saturday and a Sunday and oh my god, I love this book so much. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm in this witchy mood. Um, I went through this thing where now after reading Cackle and Slewfoot, I'm now obsessed with any book that has to do with witches. Um, so I kind of bought a ton of them. I will have a book haul up soon <laughs> with a bunch of witch books in it because I, I've, I've lost my mind basically and I'm obsessed with reading anything that has witches in it, which is so funny because I, I usually don't like witch stories, but after Cackle and Slewfoot, I'm done. I need it, all of them, 24 seven, all the time. This book, I'm not gonna tell you too much about it because I just think it's, you just, you have to read it for yourself. It takes place in 1666. It deals with the witch trials and uh, the Puritan beliefs and stuff like that. It has, uh, demons in it, has witchcraft in it, it's a revenge story as well. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm obsessed with Brom. I want to get Krampus so bad. It will be on my winter TBR, um, which I will be making a winter TBR soon, which I know I just said that I'm not doing a TBR, but whatever, whatever. But you know, I want to read Krampus so bad. I believe he has several other books that others have said are really good too. So I'm going to be adding those to my list as well. The artwork in this story, I just like, I, like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Beautiful. There's more. I'm not going to show you too, too much. If you want to watch my reading vlog, I kind of show you more of the artwork. Um, there's art just like on the pages, like above the chapters. I guess I can show you that. That's not like anything too intense, but like, ugh, like this. It's just so, so beautiful. I, I'm obsessed. I want to reread this. I loved, I loved it so much. I loved every second of it. I literally loved it. I I know I just said that and I'm about to say it for like the next book as well because I've been saying it a lot in this video but these are all five stars of course I loved it. I just this is exactly what I wanted from a witchy read. This is what I hoped this book was going to be. It lived up to its expectations and it exceeded its expectations. Um, so I'm really happy about that because everyone was rating this really high and talking about how amazing it was. Yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. It's just such a good witchy read. I, I, I think there is some scary moments. I personally didn't find them too 
scary but again that's subjective there are some really creepy and intense moments especially in my eyes they were creepy and intense um and i just really liked the the witch trial aspect and just like the information and kind of seeing it unfold in this story was very interesting um so yeah i just i highly 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 enjoyed this story and i'm obsessed with brahm now I'm obsessed. And last but not least, in the five star category and of all the books that I read in the month of October is The Last House on Needless Street by Katrina Ward. Now I read this for the Lights Out book club that I was co-hosting with Savannah aka Riveting Reads here on YouTube. We had a live show discussing our thoughts and just kind of how we felt about the book. I will link the live. You can still watch it if you missed it and just watch it back. It's, you know, it's okay if you missed it. Um, so I'll link the video and Savannah's channel down below. The live does have spoilery moments, so if you haven't read the book, um, we do indicate when the spoilers begin and when they um, aren't happening, but just in case you haven't read it. So, I, I don't even know how to give you a plot description for this book. Um, it's, a, it's a story with multiple point of views uh, that presents itself as one story, when in reality it's a completely different story. So, um, it's, a, it's a book that really confuses the reader as it goes. You never are quite sure what's happening. You're always left kind of dumbfounded and questioning. You always have questions until things start beginning to be revealed and then it's like a switch and it's it, it was shocking. Um, I've seen some people mad because they predicted the twist, which I didn't predict. I did not predict the twist actually. It, it surprised me, I, which is funny. I feel like I should have seen it coming, but I didn't. Um, so it did catch me off guard. I was slightly disappointed when the twist was revealed because I was thinking it was something else. And then when you finally get the full picture, I was much more happy with everything. So again, even when the twists are coming out, it's still not over until the very end. And after the book, there is a little message from the author basically about the book and it does spoil things, but um, in the back it does have this nice little explanation and it did make me tear up. And I have to say that I personally, I'm sure other people feel differently, but I personally feel as though the author went about this book in a very respectful and um, just a kind way and I really really enjoyed seeing how everything was handled. Uh, I really appreciated how the author handled everything and I think it was... I just, I just thought it was handled with a lot of respect and kindness and that's what really made me up it to a five star. After everything was said and done I was very unsure until I had finished the entire book, read the little message in the back, and I was like, you know what? It's a five star. I had to give it some time, I had to process it, but the more I talked about it, the more I thought about it, the more I sat on it, the more I just processed, I was like, I have to give it five. This is, I, I just have to. It has to be a five star. So, I know that's not super controversial, but also a little controversial. I know a lot of people either really love this book or they really didn't like this book, which, I mean, is pretty typical with really hyped up books. I personally really, really enjoyed it. It's a book that you have to give it time. Not You're not going to necessarily love it in the beginning because of it just, it's, it's going to take time. You need to really see everything and see the bigger picture to fully grasp and I think collect your thoughts about it. But I enjoyed it, I really liked it, and I can't wait to read more by this author in the future. There you have it my friends. Those are the four books that I read in the month of October. <laughs> it makes me laugh every time I say I read four books in the month of October because it's not 
even that bad. Like that's a, it's a decent amount of books, you know? Um, but it's just, it kind of makes me laugh when usually I'm just reading so many books. But it was a nice break and I feel like I'm refreshed and ready to read some other books and kind of just get back into the swing of things. So <laughs> hopefully November is better. I am planning my winter TBR, which I know I said I'm not having a November TBR, which I'm not not doing a specific November TBR, but I am doing a wintry TBR, at least trying to include some books that I would really like to read for the winter season, which I will make a video on soon, as soon as they all come in and I have them and I'm more, like I have a more completed list together. But I am, I'm having it up here. I'm getting the pieces, I'm getting the things together. Um, so yeah, that's the end of this video. This is the shortest wrap-up video I've ever done. Wow, that's a miracle, actually. Enjoy a small video from me. I feel like I always talk your ears off, so maybe you like shorter videos. I don't know. You can let me know in the comments down below. Let me know what you read in October. Did you have a really amazing reading month? Did you also have a, you know, <laughs> eh, reading month like me? Spooky season is over, except it's not because every day is spooky in my mind and in my eyes. So November is spooky season part two. It's October number two. I'm just having a continuation of October slash Halloween in November. I'm just going to keep it going straight into November. It just, just keeps going, you know? I don't cut off on the 31st of October. No. All the way to the end of November, okay? Yeah. I am excited for Christmas though, so. Anyways, I'm gonna stop talking. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Do you agree with my opinions? Do you disagree? Let me know. Feel free to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed. If you haven't subscribed, I urge you to do so. I mean, if you want, you don't have to, but you know, if you want to be friends, that would be cool and we, we can talk about books and movies and manga and spooky things and have fun, hopefully. I mean, I, I think we have fun on here, so, you know, subscribe if you want to have fun, be my friend. And with that being said, I hope you are having a wonderful day or night, afternoon, you know, whatever. And I will see you in my next video. Bye!